Okay, finally to end this lesson, we're gonna do a few examples where we are uh, proving identities. So what we spent in section five and one and five two doing, uh, we're gonna do it with some and difference identities. Um, so here I see cosine of a difference. Let's expand that difference first. The cosine expansion is cosine of the first times cosine of the second. Take the opposite sign of what's between them here, so plus, and then you want sine of the first, sine of the second. Okay, these two values, these two trig function values, uh, have exact values that are known that we're going to pull right off of the unit circle. So we have then cosine x times the cosine of pi over 2 which is 0 plus sine x times the sine of pi over 2 which is 1. Of course cosine x times 0 is 0. Sine x times 1 is just sine x and that's what we're trying to prove. Next example, another sum and difference expansion. This one is tangent. So the tangent expansion, we take tangent of the first plus tangent of the second divided by one minus tangent of the first times tangent of the second. So let's see, we get then tangent theta plus the tangent of pi over 4, uh, we want the y over x at pi over 4, which is 1, over 1 minus tangent theta times 1. Now, of course, in the numerator, tangent theta plus 1 is equivalent to 1 plus tangent theta, so if you just want to rewrite them, you're welcome to do that. And of course, down here, tangent of theta times 1 is just tangent of theta and that's proven. Next identity, we've got um, the sum of two different cosine sum difference expansions. So let's see, this first one here, maybe do this in colors to help keep everything straight, is going to be cosine x cosine y plus sine x sine y. Okay, now we want the plus between the terms. Now this one expands to cosine x cosine y minus sine x sine y. Okay, looking for like terms, we have sine x, sine y, and negative sine x, sine y. Those two terms add to zero. These two terms are like terms. There is one here and one here. Those two ones add to two. Cosine x, cosine y. All right, next identity, sine 3u equals all this over here. Now, you might recall me stating at the start of section 5.2 that we should always start with the more complicated side first. Certainly, this side looks more complicated. Um, however, I'm going to argue that this side is, where we have this triple angle right here. It's actually the more complicated side. Uh, and it all kind of boils down to, to how you see it, how you, uh, how you rewrite it. Sine of 3u is the same as sine of u plus 2u. Okay? If I write 3u as u plus 2u, then I can expand it with our sine formula, which is sine of the first, cosine of the second, plus cosine of the first, sine of the second. Now, each of these pieces here, each of those 2u pieces, I'm going to rewrite similar to how I rewrote the 3u as a sum. Okay, so I'm going to keep, let's 
come over here so we have some room. I'm going to keep this sine u, but the cosine to u is going to become cosine u plus u. Plus, and I've got this cosine u, this sine to u is going to become sine u plus u. All right, continuing with expansion of these sums, I've got sine u times cosine u plus u could be cosine u cosine u minus sine u sine u plus cosine u sine u plus u is sine u cosine u plus cosine u sine u. All right, now let's work inside each set of parentheses for now. We've got sine u times cosine u, cosine u is cosine squared u, minus sine u, sine u is sine squared u, plus this is over here is cosine u, and let's see, this is sine cosine, this is also sine cosine, so it's like two sine u, cosine u. All right, let's um, let's do a distributive property here, giving me um, sine u, cosine squared u minus sine cubed u plus, and there's no distributive because there's no plus, but we're just multiplying together, so it will be two sine u, cosine squared u. Notice that this term and this term are like terms. They can add together. I've got one plus two. I've got three sine u, cosine squared u, minus sine cubed u, and that's what we're trying to prove. Yeah, I, th this up here is written, the terms are written in a different order than down here, but it's multiplication, so it's all commutative. It doesn't really matter. Last example to try, one more identity. I'm going to begin by expanding each of these sum and differences. So the, the numerator is sine of the first, cosine of the second, plus cosine of the first, sine of the second, divided by, then we want, uh, it's going to be exactly the same, except it's going to be minus between them. Now, looking at this, I'm trying to make this look like this, and, and we've seen this trick before. Um, notice I've got two terms on top and bottom, plus separating, minus separating on top and bottom respectively, and that's the same form as this that I'm at right now. Um, so I think to myself, how could I turn these terms into these terms up here? Okay. Um, so let's just look at the first term of each of these expressions and see uh, how could we make that happen. Let's keep, I'm just going to rewrite sine x cosine y. I'm going to divide it by something. Notice that uh, my angle here is just simply x. I do not want a y variable at all. So I think if I divide by cosine y, those cancel and they're completely gone. Uh, to get tangent at a sine, I would need to divide it by cosine. Sine divided by cosine would reduce down to tangent. So that becomes tangent 
that becomes 1 and so in essence goes away this term would simplify to tangent x let's see if we do that to the rest of the problem okay, so we have to divide them all by the same exact thing Okay, let's go ahead and just to see it clear, let's divide out what can. Cosine y takes out cosine y. Cosine x takes out cosine x. So these cancel. Okay, and now we'll just reduce, rewrite the fractions that are left. Sine x over cosine x is tangent x plus sine y over cosine y is tangent y sine x over cosine x another tangent x minus and we have another tangent y and that's proven